Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about free time. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, well, hi Frederick, do you think that it is possible to keep up with the industry work and also have a family, hobbies, friends, time outside of the computer screen? In other words, have a life, or in other words, a life. Yes, yes I do, because I do have one, and my friends all have one, my coworkers all have one, and most of, as I, like the, the most of the best software developers I've ever worked with, they all have kids, more than one, they have marriages, they have activities they, they do on their, in their spare time, they play sports, they do all this sort of stuff. Uh, this idea that everything you have to do is related to coding is really only true uh, for the people who want to sort of talk about the, these sorts of extremes where they're trying to get you it can feel that way for especially for those who are just starting out but let me sort of explain how this usually goes so you have the group of people who are die-hard fanatics about everything and you're gonna find those people in every single thing that you can possibly find form a group around there are religious extremists such as there are people who like watch every sport or always talk about politics or like die hard about you know if you're not, not voting the world is gonna end or like you have climate people or you have people with climate deny like you have whatever like every group will always have their extreme people and we are no different when it comes to software developers where there are people who spend all their time on forums and will debate forever about you know how it, because it, to them it's a commitment how, and more of a value system how hardcore can I be can I be on top of absolutely everything and be really really dedicated to this thing because they get a sense of sensation of it, it's, it gives them gratification and so those extremes are usually the things that you might see in the media or you see highlighted because usually people are more drawn and it's more likely to be publicized or whatever to hear to let to, to sort of to be heard through the noise if you are extreme. This is why, for example, most of you are seeing videos on a constant basis related to the latest and trendiest tools and things like what I do is like it's basically non-existent because the I don't I don't have anything extreme to show you. I don't have the trendiest thing to show you, but I promise you the people who make like these high level uh, discussions about oh how we should work and so forth which are like fluff things that every single corporate uh, IT person who stopped coding a hundred years ago can put together that's going to do really well because the people who promote the this sort of content are looking for these sorts of eye-catching things and so you get in, tricked into this idea that coding is all that the software developers do when the reality is that it's actually just a small portion of people who dedicate the sort of time that you were talking about and most of them are lying about how much they are putting into it I can promise you that much because the only time when you really see these sorts of like as I said the, like the people who do the competitive coding at all times and so forth they they are definitely there, they exist, but it's not like that's a constant thing, and it's definitely not thing, something they are going to most likely do for the rest of their life. Because as you become more experienced, one of the things is that will happen for some is that they will start becoming complacent. And so as this person sort of touches on, which I sort of talked about in the video he, they commented on, which is that if you are a senior and you're getting replaced by juniors, you're basically complacent and you can, you've basically done too little to keep yourself updated. And so of course people start to ask, uh, think about, oh, does that mean that they have to study all the time and learn all the things? And I go, no. It's just that you don't understand what it means to be fully outdated uh, and how you get to such a state. So an example would be if uh, I, I've told you guys a few times before about this where I get to interview so-called quote-unquote seniors and the reality with these so-called seniors is that they never actually got to a point where they fully mastered their craft. They, are so, they were social developers to start off with and they started slacking off very early on. They had no real interest to get to the sorts of levels of experience that you need in order to be a real senior. It's just that the the industry has gotten to a point, as I like to say, we have diluted what it means to be a senior so that today a subpar 
uh, senior software developer who is by all who can basically not deal with a lot of the so-called senior level problems that you might deal with can swing that they're a senior because they know enough of uh, of it uh, to be able to trick and basically make their way through a recruitment process where most people don't actually know what it means to be a true senior. But when you get to a level of experience where you really know your shit, which usually happens if you like, because the the outdated part only happens when you don't really know what's going on and you don't keep yourself updated. But if you have even the slightest level of mastery of what you're dealing with, you will get to a point where the time it takes you to learn a new framework or a new tool or like read up on something if you simply re read a newsletter even if it's once a month you will see that after a while everything just seems to be a repetition of things you already sort of know because you've done this a million times before so it doesn't matter if there's a million libraries for juniors it's usually different because you're sort of scrambling to figure out what is relevant everything seems relevant to you because it's all new it's all interesting you don't really know what it means to live the life of a software developer but if you're at say my level or if you're uh, you know or even higher up than that it's not really something that you, you you might be looking if you in the start of things you'd read 10 20 articles a week because everything is new to you like i might read one article guys a month i scroll everything and i keep up with all the newsletters but it's very rare that i find an article that is genuinely interesting to me to for me to read because i've reached a level where i can literally build most of the tools that you might be reading about or i can all the techniques are either a repetition of something i already know or in some cases it's actually that i might actually figure out a better way of doing things so someone figured out the exact i've seen many times guys where some uh, someone has posted a really nice medium article posting basically the same findings that I myself have figured out and so you get to that point where the time you have to spend to keep yourself updated becomes almost nothing and the only time you really get that outdated as I said is either if there's like a massive innovation about something like a, a, a like to use if you were if you stopped keeping yourself updated or like even reading about what's up and like what, what changed within say front end when jQuery stopped being a thing and the React and Angular and so forth came along then yeah you that you have a problem but it's very rare that those sorts of gigantic changes to people's workflow happen and most software developers as I said when they really know their stuff they can learn basically anything that they need to learn to keep themselves updated in their place of work. The only time that doesn't happen is, as I said, either if they work in a company that doesn't leverage any of those tools and they have no information flow whatsoever. They keep like they spend no time. And I'm not, as I said, I'm not talking about hours here. I'm talking a few minutes a week, reading about articles, figuring out what the new tools are and so forth, and actually reflecting on whether or not this is relevant or not. That happens to quite a lot of software developers, guys, but it doesn't have to happen to you. And I trust me when I say this, some of the best software developers I've ever worked with, and they are top notch developers, they're average people. They might tr fiddle around with one project or try out some little tool a few hours a month at most or read an article here and there and they still perform at a higher level than most of the, you know, senior quote unquote software developers that I meet. And it doesn't matter if you have kids or not because the time investment when you're really good at what you do is so low. Uh, that it requires almost nothing. You can think about it as running a race. If you're a super fit athlete, it's going to take you no time whatsoever to just do your daily jog, like if you push it right. But for someone who's overly obese or haven't really done much, it's going to be a lot tougher for you. So what I want you to take away from this is that it is absolutely, I know for a fact that it is possible to have a full, full live a full family life and have friends and all of these sort of things and still make it as a software developer. The thing that I keep telling people is that you need to get to a point where you sort of know how to do the job and not just like at the bare minimum level. As I said, guys, there are more so-called senior software developers who are like worth they are not worth the money that they might get paid and if they're uh, usually it's only the companies who don't really know how to hire software developers who hire these people because like they're they're subpar that's the reality these people have a as i said they've already gotten to a stage where they knew they 
either they got into some work environment or somewhere where they could just sort of swing getting by and now they have a job so you know mission complete right but they haven't reached a level of mastery where they can basically just relax not really if they want to be at the like the be applicable for most jobs but the people that are really talented and have at least a little passion in the beginning and actually take the time and like invest so that they get really good the, it's like re learning how to ride a bicycle or like really working out a lot when you're a kid it's something that stays for you the, for the rest of your life and even if you get a little bit complacent it's fine because the it it's like it takes so little time for you to catch up to everybody else because you already know all your fundamentals you know how to structure things you have already gone through a lot of the practicing that necessary and i promise you guys the whole thing everything is moving all the time is true but most of it is irrelevant to the vast majority of you. It's only because you might not know what is a good investment, what's a trend that you should ignore, what's a trend you should follow. Uh, that uncertainty, that is the thing that usually makes people feel stressed, like they have to learn things all the time. But when you get to, as I said, that real senior, more experienced level, you will be surprised at how little things actually change. There's a lot of noise, but there is not that much changing that you have to st stay on top of. So there's more than enough time to have family, uh, you know, ma get married, get kids. Uh, I can have hobbies and so forth and so forth without necessarily compromising your ability to re retain a job within IT. Have a great day.